I have an awful lot of explaining to do. On two fronts. <laughs> Hello there everyone, this is TIJ and welcome to episode 1 of season 5 of Conquering the Euro on Foot Match 2019 with Borussia Dortmund. Dortmund, we've gone to Germany. We are no longer at Liverpool. Before I explain what's gone on here, anything that's happened, well we've moved club, you can see that, but... Before I explain anything that's gone on here, you'll notice that there's not an awful lot behind me. I mean, I can see what's behind me. There's a big fat green screen. And that's why I'm, I'm lovely and transparent in the screen. I'm looking at myself now, and I think this looks absolutely fantastic. I think I've optimised it quite well, and I think it looks quite good. So let me down in the comments what you think of that. And I've had that for Christmas, because of course Mr. Claus came down the chimney and bought a big fat green screen down the, uh, the, down the chimney. Hint, hint. And I think it's brilliant. Secondly, we've got a new webcam. Again, bought my Mr. Claus for Christmas, so you can see my glowing face a bit more in a better quality. And thirdly, we've gone to Dortmund. It's like Christmas. It's all changed. Well, shall I tell you a little bit about the story? I will tell you a, bit, a, little, a little bit about the story. So, let's go to the end of last season. We were with Liverpool, obviously, as we were. And we got to sort of maybe the start of June, and a few jobs started coming up. One was Napoli, one was Dortmund, and there was a few others, the likes of perhaps... Um, I'm making these up, but Montpellier, Marseille in France, you know, etc, etc. But Dortmund was the one team out of those three or four that we actually applied for that gave us an interview. And I thought, mm, this is brilliant, you know, we've got a chance of getting the job. Had a nice interview, and we in fact got the job. Well, we got offered the job as well as the job at Tottenham. Now, obviously the rule of this save is to win in five different nations, win the league in five different nations. We haven't done that yet in England, and I thought, maybe if we go to Tottenham we can do that. But my one worry was, was that if I won it with Tottenham in one season, I wanted to get out of England as soon as I could. The thing with Germany is, if I win the title this year, I'm happy to stay for another year, maybe even three years, build a bit of a legacy here, and then go when the time is right. So I thought Dortmund would be a really good choice. So what I'm going to say, because we didn't succeed in England the first time in Liverpool, we are going to have to go back to England at some point during this save, or else the object of winning five titles is certainly not over. But it's not over by any stretch of the imagination yet, because we were at Borussia Dortmund, but I think that's enough of an intro into that, but obviously we're at Dortmund, it's a new club, it's a new time, and there hasn't been a necessary upheaval at the club, but we have changed a few things, first off we've got a little bit of a little change, we have brought one of our staff members over with us, perhaps not one of the most known staff members, um, but a German himself, Peter Kravitz, or Peter Kra Kra Kravitz, I'm not, it's not Kravitz, Krav oh, we can, well we can go with Kravitz, he was obviously our assistant for a long time, and he was at Dortmund for seven years before, and with Jurgen Klopp, of course. So we brought him back to Dortmund um, with his bit of German um, awareness, etc. But apart from that, all of the club staff are Borussia Dortmund native club staff, if you like. People that we haven't brought in. We've just brought in Peter Kravitz or Kravitz or however you want to go around it. We've also made a hell of a lot of signings. We have got our first game to show you today against Dortmund. Uh, and I'll show you the transfers just before we get into what happened in pre-season. So... On the transfers front, we have sold a amount of £94 million and bought in a total of £55 million. Now, the club finished sixth in the league last year. Not their best finish by any stretch of the imagination. So, we are in the Europa League this year. We've actually got to go through the qualifying rounds after Dortmund had quite a bad season last year. A whole 30 points off Bayern Munich at the top. But it's fair to say that we're buying 21 points clear from Leipzig. There's a lot to catch up on this year for Borussia Dortmund. But we finished sixth last year, which meant that a lot of players perhaps wanted to leave. Uh, weren't, content, weren't content necessarily not getting Champions League football. And we had a few big sales. Abudo Diallo has gone Stoke, our big centre-back for £30 million. Again, I was quite happy with that sale, to be honest, because last season he didn't play many games, didn't seem to be play, play very well. And for someone that I hadn't really got much knowledge of, um, a value of £30 million was very impressive. We also sold Ricardo Pereira to Chelsea. He can play all across the right as a defensive uh, right back and a uh, attacking midfield on the right. Again, not the best of campaigns last year. 6.65. It is fair enough to comment on the fact that obviously none of them had the best campaign last year. But looking at his stats through the save, it's not been the best. And to be honest, I thought that was a good a good sale for him. We've also sold Mahmoud Dahoud, another central midfield. We had absolutely we had loads central midfielders. We had nine central midfielders. At the start of this transfer window. So we wanted to get rid of one or two of them. Um, and he hadn't had the best. In fact, out of the nine central midfielders, he's had the worst season in terms of his stats last year. So he went to Cardiff for a nice healthy 15 million. We also get rid of Christopher Schindler, who has actually had Huddersfield at the moment. You'll recognise him has. Um, and he moved to Hertha Berlin. And he's gone to, he went to Dortmund for two seasons. Played 17 games. And to be quite honest, didn't look fantastic. So again, that was a good sale. And we've sold a few players. But now we are on to the signing. So we've signed seven players who you can see in all their glory there. 
and we're going to go all through them now. So we're going to start with the one we got on a free. This is an interesting sign, actually. Aaron Ramsey's come to the club on a free transfer. Now, he's played for Arsenal his, all his career, basically, since he um, joined from Cardiff in 2008. But last year, he only played two games. He came to the end of his contract. And at the ripe old age of 31, Arsenal didn't want him anymore. And I thought, you know what? This could, you know, give Ramsey a new lease of life coming here. Again, there's a few central midfields we want to get rid of. It is, an, it is a packed position. But it is one that I thought we could be bringing a little, little bit of new blood to. As you can see, he's not necessarily the best in that position, but he's got the most internationally experienced. He's got the most experience overall. So I thought that would be a brilliant signing for us. And again, it hasn't cost us anything apart from the £110,000 which we're paying him a week just for this year. So if it doesn't go too well this year, he can always leave at the end of the year. So it's a very low-risk signing for me. We had to sign Balotelli, didn't we? Balotelli's also come in. Again, the same age as Ramsey. In fact, when were they born? So Ramsey is four years, uh, four years, four months younger than Mario Balotelli, but he came in um, for a cost of 10.75, sorry, 11.75 million. We don't need to talk about what he did at Liverpool because we've seen it all before. He had a great season last year. And I do hope it's his first time in Germany and I hope he uh, can transfer a little bit of his good form um, over to Germany. That'd be absolutely fantastic to see. We've also bought Harry Wilson from Liverpool. Now that's an expensive signing. We've signed him for 25 million pounds, but there's been a lot of outs at Liverpool. It seems the new manager, Valverde, um, isn't keen on some of these players, and 77 million they've sold worth, and I can't believe they've sold Jorge Mir to Chelsea. We had a bit of 60 million for him from Bayern, but they've sold to Chelsea, a league rival, for 14 million. Dear Shakiri's left the club, Aguero's gone on a free, we agreed that before he left, and that's just absolutely bonkers. You'll see we've actually signed another player from there as well. Um, but Harry Wilson had a great breakthrough year last year, and he was actually at. Uh, he's had. He's got experience in Germany. He had a year with Augsburg a few years back, but I think he's made the jump since he's been at Augsburg back to Liverpool. And I think with our coaching, he can become a very good standalone figure on that right wing. But he has going to. He's going to have to compete with some big names, the likes of Christian Pulisic and Kevin Bolland to get a first team place on that right hand side. We've also brought in Marcus Rojo in the middle. We obviously lost the centre back and a left back, and he can play centre back and left back. Marcus Rojo, you will be familiar with him from his years at Manchester United. But in the game, he's moved around a bit. He's been at five different clubs. In fact, six different clubs in six years. Which doesn't look the best, to be honest. Um, but his stats don't look, to, don't look too bad. He's not played the best, but I've just signed him purely on the name, really, of Marcus Rojo. He's a solid centre-back, and I think he'll play a lot of games for us this year. And as well, £25,000 a week is pretty cushy. It's not a lot at all. Um, it's a very low risk signing again. We've also signed Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Funnily enough, we signed him... I think he played, well, they played Man uh, Crystal Palace in real life, played against Man City in the uh, league last week. And uh, I was watching Bissaka and I thought he's playing brilliant here. And funnily enough, he was on a free, well, not on a free, but on the transfer list for Crystal Palace, who's where he's been all his career. Now, he's not had the best stats, I'll admit it. You know, his, his, um, you know, his average rates haven't been brilliant, but his report is half decent. He's got ability to improve. Apparently, he's not the best, but we were only looking for a... Um, a backup, a backup right back. He's had some good training at Crystal Palace, a top club, um, because they got relegated last year. He's in the club again, a low risk signing, two million pound, and he's on only nineteen thousand pound a week. So nice, a nice and easy, um, cheap signing. We've also loaned in Ethan Impadu from Chelsea again, as Chelsea usually do. He's gone out and loaned to several places: Mitchell, Antorino, Lazio, and most recently Atlanta. He hasn't had the most game time, but uh, just a little bit of experience is all we need, and he's going to be our fourth choice centre back. Behind Milenkovic, Pongravic, uh, Pong, Pongracic, Rojo, and then in Padu will be fourth. But uh, I think that, is it Pongracic? Yeah, he's out for about five weeks. So he is going to be our top substitute uh, centre back. So thank the Lord we brought him in. And finally, we've signed Divock Origi, again, another Liverpool player. His stats look actually very good. Um, his ability looks fantastic. Apparently, he's very good, even better than Kevin Volland, which I, I do question that, but. Our scouts are good, so we're going to go with the views of them. Now, obviously, we've had uh, a review all our career. He's gone out on loan to several places, Roma, Lisbon, and Lazio. Not done the best again, but again, quite a low risk signing, £14 million. And these really were just all to bolster up the squad. So after all those signings in and out, we have ended up with this squad. Quite a nice, not necessarily a small squad, but at the same time, not a massive squad either. Um, and we do certainly have a first eleven in mind for the rest of the season. Now, as I said before, we have got to qualify for the Europa League. We've actually got to qualify through the best-placed rounds. And we already have already played three games in those best-placed rounds already. Now, we had Shamrock Rovers to play in the second round of that, which we beat them 5-0 on both occasions. Balotelli getting four good starts to his career here at Dortmund. Royce getting a hat-trick in the first game away from home. And then Pulisic, Keane and Wan-Bissaka contributing to the goals away, uh, back at home at the uh, West Stadion. That's the best I can do. 
And then we've just gone away to Ush Best. Is that a Hungarian team? Sounds something like that. Hungarian? Yeah, Hungarian team. Um, Ush Best. We'll go with that. Uh, we beat them 3-0 away from home. Royce and Volland scored the goals there. And it should be quite an easy one. And I think that is the final round. There might, I'm hoping there isn't, a, there isn't another round. Christ. That's unbelievable. There's another round yet. And then we finally um, can qualify for the group stage if we win that fourth qualifying round. But it's going to be a little bit of an interrupted start to our season, which I'm not the biggest fan of in the world. But we have got this going against uh, Leverkusen in the league. We haven't got the hardest of starts, I wouldn't say. We've got Leverkusen, which is quite a big game in its own right. And then we've got Augsburg, Stuttgart and Darmstadt in the next three games before facing RB Leipzig back on camera in the next episode, which will be quite a tough game. But let's get, past, let's, get, let's get past this first game first, shall we? So, we've got the late game on a Sunday. So, this is the team that's going to play in it. So, Butland's in goal. We have got Butland, unbelievably. Uh, he did sign from Stoke a number of years ago in this save. How much did the buying ball? The ball's for £29 million and he's doing quite solidly at the back, which is nice to see for him. We've got Butland at the back. We have Wagnerman, Milenkovic, Rojo and Augustinson at the back. So, Rojo makes his debut today. Delaney and Ramsey in the midfield with Ramsey making his debut. And then Royce and Pulisic are chosen on the wings with Balotelli and Volland up front. Now, Royce is getting on a bit. He's 33 years old or 34. He's 33 years old. Turns 34 at the end of the season. And this possibly might be Royce's last season for us. Um, but he is solid on that left wing. So we are going to keep him there just for the moment. Um, but on the bench, we've got our substitute goalkeeper, Wan Bissaka in Padu. Arigul uh, waited to make their debuts. And then we've got Moise Keane, Gomez and Pe Pepelu. But you will learn, learn these players' names throughout the save. Um, you know, it's it's a collective adventure, I suppose you could say. And hopefully, either this year or next year, will be our first title in conquering Euro. I'm good to we couldn't do anything at Liverpool. But to be honest, I thought that by the end of the fourth season that we were too far away from the teams at the top of the league. And this is a big challenge as well. It's 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 a more of a big challenge. Obviously, we're doing the reverse of what Jurgen Klopp did. It is a huge challenge here at Dortmund. But one I'm looking forward to, and I think one that possibly we could do um, within a few seasons, providing that Bayern Munich have quite a poor campaign this year. But um, we've just told the players to get on with it. You know, try your best. I'm hoping that we win for the fans. Um, but if we don't win, you know, it's not the end of the world. But I would quite like the players to win today. Again, gives us a good start for our career here at Dortmund. And it should be quite nice. But I can guarantee this will probably morph into a 1-0 draw. I'm just checking, I just keep checking OBS just to make sure that our head looks all right. Um, it certainly does. It looks quite weird, to be honest, to be able to look in the pitch with a green screen. Look, like you can see my hand and uh, there's nothing else. Amazing. Right, a, a poor throw, to be honest, from our number 15 there. But he passes it to Ramsey. A good recovery there from Wagnerman. Pulisic, Pulisic on the edge of the box. Cuts inside. Delaney to Kevin Volland. Kevin Volland shoots. Oh, he's just off the post. And that is quite unfortunate. But it misses the post. Um, sorry, misses the goal. Hits the post and just goes out. But they have the most possession so far. Don't forget, though, they are the home team. So that's not a surprise at all. But the ref has given a foul. It seems that one of their defenders has, take, uh, has tripped Balotelli. Apologies about that, folks. We're back. Right. There was a foul on Balotelli by the defender. But it seems the ref is consulting VAR. Is it going to be a penalty? Vendel was the um, offender in this. The so-called offender. Is it going to be a penalty? Come on. Give the penalty. He's come back in and he's given it a penalty. Our Sasha Stegerman. So Balotelli is on the box. He's uh, running up to take the kick. Will he score his first goal for Dortmund? I think the refs, I think the goalkeeper's gone the right way. He has. Could that be an omen for Balotelli's time here at Dortmund? He's took the penalty. He didn't miss many at Liverpool. And he's missed that one. Well, he hasn't missed it, to be fair. It, would, it was on target, but the goalkeeper saved it. He was beaten there, rather, than he missed. But he has tracked back there. Fair play to him um, to try and get this. But possibly, that's nice. Good stuff from Mario. Oh, dear. So, he's missed the penalty. He's run back. A bit of passion, a bit of determination. And he's slid in on Ritter. And uh, the VAR's back out again. A red card review. This is interesting. Has the referee given Mario Balotelli a red card? No further action needed. Apparently there's a few doubts about that decision. Well, that's interesting. But Balotelli has certainly not had the best start to his career here at Dortmund. We are just going to tell him to calm down um, and concentrate on the box. Because we don't want him to be sent off. At the end of the day, he's one of our biggest assets. Um, and if he gets his head riled, then that's no good for anyone. But a good clearance there from Rojo. Just go straight back out there to the Leverkusen player, mind. But Gay goes on the edge of the box. So Barco and Askville Bargo. Uh, but it's not in Bargo. Um, 
Esquivel Barco scores the first goal of the game. And it looks like Leverkusen, well, they are in front, but it looks like Leverkusen have been the better team. And they're ahead here. Hmm, that's interesting. But to be fair, Ballo should have scored that penalty, really. You know, that wasn't good enough from us. And hopefully we don't get two down here, but it's across the pitch from Ritter to Vendel. And Vendel remaining patient on that left-hand side. But good stuff from our number 15, the right-back, to try and track and close him down. But Leverkusen are just the better side at the moment. It's taken them a little while to get into this formation. It seems the players taking a little bit of time to get used to it. And Havertz has scored another goal, which leaves to a 17th place at the moment. Oh, dear. I said this would be a challenge. I wasn't wrong there. Looks like we're going to be 2-0 down at half-time. Maybe even 3, but good stuff from Rojo. Can he pass it? He can. Augustinson on the ball. Augustinson in the middle to Delaney. Aaron Ramsey back out to the left. Nice stuff. If we can get one back before half-time, that could be quite nice for us. Augustinson. Poor pass from our ref back. It's not really good. I don't think we've got the... We haven't got the quality of left back, it seems, clearly, to put them balls up. And this could well be 3-0 here. But to be fair, to the left back, after all that uh, criticism we've just given him, he's won the ball back once, but he should have won it back twice there. We get it out again, but it's not good enough. Rita to their number eight. It's number eight against number eight, but uh, Rita gets it back. He's been, he seems to have been the state, uh, the you know, the, the best player in the game, really, Rita, so far. Um, Galga, Avertz, who scored the goal earlier, and it's a third for Dortmund, uh, for Leverkusen. Oh dear, this is not a good start to our Dortmund career whatsoever. We went here to try and get away from all the the frustration and hardships at Liverpool, but it seems they've followed us straight to Dortmund. Well, I'll be honest, I'm, I think we're going to very much struggle to get back into this game. I can't see us getting free in the second half. Um, we are going to have to change things. We have to go a lot more direct, I would say, at this point, personally. Um, hit early crosses... Play for set pieces, long kicks from the keeper, um, and just prevent short distribution, high defensive line, and use the offside trap. And I think Balotelli's got to come off because he hasn't played well enough, to be honest. Um, bring a Riki on. We're going to bring Moise Keane on as well because Kevin Bolland has done absolutely nothing either. Um, and we're going to make it a triple sub, I think, for the... No, we're not actually. We're just going to leave it as it is for the moment. But we'll, we will understand, you know, throughout the save. We'll work out who is our best 11 and who our best players are. Because we've only just joined the club ourselves. We've had a pre-season to figure the players out, but it's not until you properly play um, that you really know who are your best players. That's a good uh, cross from Royce, but unfortunate not to get there. Moise Keane did have a good header there, but it was off the bar. I don't believe that we're actually bottom of the uh, Bundesliga. That's not quite the desired effect I wanted to have here at Dortmund. But it's a cross in from our number 22, but Ron Zeele gets straight to it in the Leverkusen goal. I couldn't have but picked a worse time in the day to do this. I've been interrupted so many times. Right, let's get back on it. Let's tell the players to concentrate. Let's get one or two back at least. Even if we lose this game, even if it's unassailable at this point, let's get one or two back. But this move does not suggest that. Good save from Butland, though. And Wagnerman does get it out. Now, can Origi make something on his Dortmund debut? Origi on the wing. Good ball through to Pulisic, but, oh, they've lost it. And uh, just not the chemistry between the players at this point, I don't think. Sorry if I sound shattered. I've just ran up the stairs. Should be a bit fitter than that, though, surely. Rojo, back out to the... Well, <laughs> Rojo's cleared it, but only to um, one of their players. We haven't got to work on that uh, distribution from the corners, I think, because that's what's letting us down a bit here. And Rich has another shot, and it's four now. Oh, dear. Oh, it's not going to go well here, is it? I can just feel it in my bones. Oh. Right, it's been Prepoli on for... Um, Ramsey, I, <laughs> I can't really say that anyone's had a bad game because they've all had a bad game. So, you know, that's that's the that's the shame of it. Deary me. Um, I don't know what to say at this point. To be fair, um, I know it sounds very daft, but I'm not actually too fussed because... Oh, Origi could get a goal there. It's a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And that just about sums up the game. It was a decent shot from Origi. In fact, we've had 11 of them so far and 7 on target. So they've been defending well, have they? Because it's a fair play to them. Um, but this loss, I suppose, just highlights the fact that the Bundesliga is going to be harder, perhaps, perhaps potentially, than the Premier League. And I think we've made the right signs. I think this will be a good team. But I think we're probably going to have a little bit like the Spurs factor when they signed a lot of players a few years back. And, you know, they're not going to be able to do much. Um, oh, we've scored, though. Who's scored? Origi's got his first goal. That's brilliant for him. Uh, Origi got, has got his first Dortmund goal. Typical the second that we don't look that we actually score. Royce got a, a good... Uh, 
free kick there, and it went just against the crossbar. But Origi got it from there, that rebound, and Origi scored his first goal for Dortmund. If we can pull one or two back here, which is what I've always said, if we can reduce the deficit to one or maybe two goals, it doesn't look as bad, but I don't think it will end up like that. But I think that, you know, our next three games aren't the hardest in the world. I think we can get nine points from those three games. And I think that then we can go into that Leipzig game a little bit stronger, um, a little bit more motivated, and a little bit more of as a team. Because there's a lot of new personnel that's going into this team at the end of the day. Um, there's a lot of the big players, potentially, from here, um, which have left the club. And Origi scored again. Again, a nice, a nice to see that at least one player's had a good game from us. It was another mistake from Leverkusen. But ultimately, Origi has made the most of that mistake. And... I think that we can have a good time here. I think that maybe not this year, but I think within two, maybe three years, we can win the league here because, you know, we've got a good, we've got a good squad. We've got the reputation of being probably the second best team in the league. And all we need is for Bayern to have a few slip-ups. And I think we can upset the apple cart at Bayern Munich, I personally think. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not too worried about this result. It's not the worst result anyway with the deficit coming down to two goals. But it is a loss, nevertheless. So that is a little bit disappointing to start our save here at Dortmund with that result. But if you have enjoyed that, make sure to leave a like on the video, comment down below and subscribe to the channel for more green screen footage and conquer the year every day from Monday to Friday. I hope you had a great Christmas and I'll see you guys tomorrow at 6pm, back as usual um, for the daily release of FM19 Conquer the Year. Thank you very much for watching, folks, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.